This video is brought to you by Privacy.com, which lets you buy things online using virtual cards, protecting your identity and bank information on the internet. Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, I'm gonna be comparing the latest and greatest 2019 Dell XPS 7590 with an eight core processor and the beautiful 4K OLED display against a top of the line MacBook Pro or almost top of the line, I should say. This one has the base model eight core. The one that's one step up, $200 more is not worth it because of the thermal limitations. So you guys can save yourself some money. We're gonna see how these compare in a variety of codecs and looking at the latest version of DaVinci Resolve, the full release. Yes, I had to retest a bunch <laughs> and the latest version of Premiere Pro and I'll also throw in Final Cut if that is an option that you might be looking into. Of course, the Windows laptop cannot run Final Cut. Now on top of that, if you already bought an XPS and you're just watching this video for fun, there is one thing that you absolutely have to do that will change the performance of the XPS by a ton, especially in some tests. In one test I had over an hour for, to render and it went down to under 10 minutes, no joke. Uh, so I wanna jump right into performance and some of the benchmarks, and then I'll save uh, other things towards the end of this video, because I know this is what you guys wanna hear about the most, but please stick around, because there's some great info. So let's start off with CPU performance. Looking at Cinebench R20, which is pushing all of these cores to the max. As you guys can see, the XPS does have the higher score. It does have a slightly faster processor, but it also has better cooling. And we do have a big difference in graphics cards. If we look at OpenCL, which I'm using just to keep kind of a level playing field. Uh, the MacBook Pro gets almost 80,000, whereas the XPS gets about 122,000. So yes, it does have a more powerful graphics card, but this test isn't just a you know, comparison of hardware. This is also a comparison of efficiency. Let's jump into the test right away. We're gonna take a look at stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip. And here, as you guys can see, the performance is very similar. So the XPS is two seconds faster in Resolve, but in Premiere Pro, the MacBook Pro is slightly faster. I... So now let's go ahead and take a look at a five minute 4K project. This is two LUTs and film grain applied. As you can see in DaVinci Resolve, the results are very close. The MacBook Pro is slightly faster, but if we take a look at Premiere Pro, we have about four and a half minutes for the MacBook Pro and close to six minutes for the Dell XPS. How could that be happening if the XPS has faster CPU and quite a bit faster graphics as well? That is all about efficiency and optimization. With the Metal API, even though we have weaker graphics, we do have faster speeds because it is more efficient with the graphics uh, compared to the Windows system here. And a lot of people have been saying that Macs are slower for Premiere Pro, but Adobe did a fantastic job updating it. They're finally making really good use of Metal and we can see that efficiency improvement. So no longer are Macs worse for Premiere Pro, as you guys can see here. Now, uh, both of these graphics cards, the Vega 20 and the 1650 are limiting the CPUs. These A-core CPUs need better graphics uh, to be able to breathe, basically. They are being slowed down, held back. Now in the MacBook Pro, it makes sense because it's super thin and the power adapter is only 87 watts. Unplug from the wall, the system doesn't get slow where it runs exactly the same. On the XPS side, I really wish they put in better graphics. I talked about that last year. I talked about that the year before. And uh, now it makes an even bigger difference than before. In a lot of these tests, we see that the graphics is being maxed out and the CPU is running at 30%, 50%, 60%. It is not being utilized fully. Uh, where the MacBook Pro is a little bit better, but it's still being held back. And let's take a look at 8-bit H.265, also a five minute project with two LUTs and film grain applied. Uh, and here, as you guys can see, um, the MacBook Pro is quite a bit faster in all of the tests by a good shot. And in Resolve and Premiere Pro, the times are very similar, about six and a half minutes or so, compared to less than three minutes for the MacBook Pro. Now timeline, both of these are fantastic. They can both decode H.265 8-bit very well, and also 10-bit actually, you will not be disappointed. But because of the T2 chip that is inside of the MacBook Pro that can encode H.265 very fast, very efficiently, we see those speed improvements. And of course, if you're gonna be exporting a 10 minute, 20 minute project, this time savings will go a long way compared to this five minute test. Now, if we go into 10 bit, as you guys can see in DaVinci Resolve, the Dell XPS is quite a bit faster, but I do wanna warn you that 
I don't know if this is accurate. Uh, in the MacBook Pro, I know we're outputting a 10-bit file for HDR, but in the XPS, it seems like it's actually encoding an 8-bit file. If you guys have info on this, please let me know. I'm gonna be doing more research about this. Now, in Premiere Pro, that does start to flip. The MacBook Pro is almost twice as fast as the Dell XPS, and a big limitation to this is that graphics card. Now, let's go ahead and jump into some tougher codecs. We're starting off with Canon C200 RAW. This is 4K 60 footage that is pushing both the CPU and the graphics to their limits. Looking at DaVinci Resolve, uh, the times are actually very similar. The MacBook Pro is a little bit faster, and then if we look at Premiere Pro, same thing. They're very similar, but the MacBook Pro is a little bit faster. Uh, this is more CPU dependent here, so we're seeing less of a difference. The graphics are being used, but the CPU is just being maxed out. If we actually look at the timeline performance, neither of these systems can play back 4K 60 RAW, but they can get close to 4K 30, and both can do 4K 24 with a LUT and some color corrections applied. And in Premiere Pro, we have 11 frames per second for both systems if we keep playing back at full resolution. As you can see, Premiere Pro has a much harder time than Resolve and Final Cut, which can do it at 30. Um, but if we go down to half, then the XPS runs at 40 and the MacBook Pro runs at 44. So uh, once again, slower system, but better efficiency is giving us a better result. Since we're talking about optimization and efficiency, let me tell you about something that I never thought would be possible. The amazing tech from our sponsor, privacy.com. In a time where credit card data breaches and hacks seem to be the new norm, privacy.com has solved this issue and it will protect your identity and bank information completely free. And unlike banks, it's crazy fast and efficient too. With just a few clicks, you can quickly create virtual card numbers that are locked to whatever merchant you shop at. So even if it's hacked, they won't be able to use them elsewhere. You can even make one-time use cards, which are great for single payments, trials that require cards, or for sketchy sites, and you can set a variety of limits so you'll never be upgraded to another service. Their Chrome extension makes it easy to use by auto-filling your card info, and unlike credit card companies, privacy does not sell your data, but keeps it safe using military-grade encryption. Not only is it completely free, but if you sign up today, you'll get $5 towards your first purchase. So visit privacy.com slash Max or use the link below to start keeping your banking info safe. Now let's take a look at Red 4.5K RAW, another five minute project with two LUTs and film grain applied. Uh, once again, the MacBook Pro is slightly faster in Premiere and DaVinci Resolve, but I wanna point out how close these times are here. If you look at Final Cut, we're running six minutes, 27 seconds, and Final Cut was always way faster. And in this case, DaVinci Resolve is actually faster than Final Cut and Premiere Pro is just a little bit behind. And as far as timeline performance, uh, at half resolution, both these systems can play it back and in DaVinci Resolve actually at full resolution, they're playing it back. So um, that is fairly close. Now let's get into some tips for you guys. So first off, I've done this test so many times. I retested the MacBook Pro, I retested the Dell XPS, uh, and the results at first were horrible on a Dell XPS. The graphics card is bottlenecking it like crazy. And then Dell put out a BIOS update that was supposed to fix some major throttling issues that they were having. So if you bought one of these XPSs, go to Dell's website, get that update, Date. That took the red 4K test from over an hour in Premiere Pro down to seven minutes and 38 seconds. That was a, just a huge difference there. Some of the tests, it didn't make a, that much difference, maybe a minute or two. Uh, in the C200 test, it actually made no difference at all because that was really hammering the CPU. The CPU was the bottleneck, but man, this laptop was gonna get a horrible review and now it is much better. Now, even with that said, uh, with that fix, still Dell should have put a better graphics card in this system. If we take a look at the four minute test or the 4K five minute test, the H.264, I have an MSI laptop with the RTX 2070 and that took uh, like in the three minutes range, I'll put the results right over here for you guys, uh, with a CPU that's the same in the MacBook Pro, slightly slower CPU because the graphics card is limiting. I wish we put in RTX. One limitation also with a 1650 graphics card, not only is it four gigs of RAM, just like the Vega 20, which is a bummer, but also some of the hardware inside of there is slower, older generation, like the NVENC, the NVIDIA encoder. That is an older generation compared to all of the other current graphics cards that are a new version. And along with that, I couldn't even find that hardware encoding in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro to try to test it out. I don't know if it's just 
not supporting it or what is going on. But that is a bummer. And I don't know why they keep doing this. We have a beautiful display, great processor, and the graphics card is limiting it. Uh, so the other thing that I wanna talk about is these system configurations. I mentioned that both of these have their own benefits. So the MacBook Pro has a, a worse keyboard, but I like the clicky feel, way better speakers. It also has a way better trackpad. It's thin, it's light, and you can actually power it off of a portable USB uh, little power bank that costs like 30 bucks. The Dell also has Thunderbolt 3, but you have to buy like a $200 power, power bank that can put out a ton of wattage for it to accept it. So if you're editing on the go, the MacBook Pro, you plug in one of those and your battery life will be really good. You'll be able to keep editing and running off of external power. So first off, it has that 4K OLED display. It is gorgeous. When I put it side by side against the MacBook Pro, which has a nice screen, DCI-P3, it smoked it. But with that said, there is some downsides. So when I calibrated it, I did get 98% Adobe RGB, which is fantastic. But if you start lowering the brightness or adjusting the brightness from where you calibrated it from, uh, your color accuracy starts shifting and it is just not good. I was editing when I dimmed down the screen and the colors were so out of whack that I could just visually tell with my eyes. So buy a calibrator, absolutely you have to have one. I'll link one down in the video description so you can calibrate it out of the, uh, out of the box with a certain brightness set and make sure when you're editing you have that brightness and you do not touch it or else your colors are gonna get messed up. Now, there's two more big differences. One of those is price. The Mac Pro is about $1,000 more expensive, and that is no small difference. That is huge. For a lot of people, that will make or break their decision. And the benefit also, along with the cheaper price, is that with the Dell, you can swap out your SSD, which is kind of slower out of the box, about 1,000 megabytes per second slower. You can swap out your RAM. You can actually put 64 gigs of RAM in here, so cheaper and upgradable. Now, along with that, there is one thing that I would suggest for you guys, and that is, if you're a video editor, go for the cheaper system, $2,100. You can get this with 16 gigs of RAM, a six core processor, same graphics card, a 4K display that is not OLED, but it's also just as color accurate. It's a LCD, so you don't have to worry about the color shift if you change brightness. And it's also a touchscreen. So in the real world, you're gonna get very similar performance to the numbers that I showed you guys today for less money. And I think that's a much better pairing. This 1650 with a six core, or I wish we can get the Vega 20 with a six core, but we can't with the MacBook Pro. So if you're on a budget, go for that system. For about 120 bucks, you can add in your own RAM and get 32 gigs, and that will give you an awesome budget video editing machine and a much better value than the MacBook Pro. I will have both of these systems linked down in the video description below, along with the budget system that I would recommend. Uh, go ahead and check that out, guys. If you buy through those links, that helps me be able to make more videos like this one. These are very time intensive. I had to retest multiple times after the BIOS updates and uh, DaVinci Resolve came out with the full release of, Divi of uh, DaVinci Resolve 16. Man, that was, it took a while. I wanted to get this video out like a week ago. But there you guys have it. Those are my suggestions. Once again, big shout out to privacy.com. Please go sign up. It is an incredible service, absolutely free. They even give you $5 to spend wherever you would want. That helps support the channel. This has been Max, and I will see you guys in the next video.